epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Making a video with the phrase, you won't believe in the title, often carries a big risk. That's why I wanted to challenge myself to make a video worthy of such a title. To do this, I sought help from the Twitter account Crazy Ass Moments in Theme Park History. This page specializes in crazy amusement and theme park moments that actually happened. And with the help of my viewers, I've compiled a top 15 list of some of the most insane roller coaster facts out there. Now we're going to be discussing plenty of unbelievable facts and moments in this video. You know what else is unbelievable? Enjoying a delicious bowl of cereal with zero grams of sugar. All thanks to this video's sponsor, Magic Spoon. Remember being a kid, watching cartoons on a Saturday morning with a bowl of sweet cereal? I sure do. But as an adult, finding a cereal that's both tasty and healthy can be a challenge. Admittedly, I've been aiming to watch my sugar intake after moving into a new apartment. That's where Magic Spoon comes in. Magic Spoon is a cereal that's specially made to taste like some of your biggest nostalgic favorites. Not only is it delicious, but it's also high in protein, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and has zero sugar. Specifically, we're talking 13 to 14 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and just four to five grams of net carbs. With ingredients like milk protein and naturally occurring allulose, you can enjoy a wholesome meal without sacrificing taste. Moreover, Magic Spoon has plenty of flavors to choose from, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter, along with even more like honey nut, birthday cake, cinnamon roll, and chocolate chip cookie. On top of all of that is Magic Spoon's new cereal treats. If you're craving a mid-afternoon snack, these are just what you're looking for, sweet and satisfying, all with 11 grams of protein and just one gram of sugar. Plus, they come in two delicious flavors, marshmallow and chocolatey peanut butter, Ready to try Magic Spoon yourself? Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen and use the promo code CRAZY for $5 off your own custom box. Magic Spoon offers a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money with no questions asked. Plus, for my fans in the UK and Canada, Magic Spoon ships to you as well. So start the new year right and grab yourself a box of Magic Spoon today. Now let's get on with the video. Oh, hang on. Number 15. Thorpe Park Body Odor The last thing you want in your Thorpe Park roller coaster is someone's armpit odor. But as it turns out, that might be what you get. Alright, I'm not going to go through the whole video doing a chills impression, but anyway. Did you know that England's Thorpe Park faced a rather unusual issue with its roller coasters in the late 2000s? Believe it or not, a common complaint among guests at the time was the body odor of other park goers. Thorpe Park officials took these concerns seriously, so in 2009, they implemented a policy that banned visitors from raising their arms on roller coasters. In doing this, the park hoped to tackle the complaints about BO, especially on hot days. To enforce this rule, officials put signs up everywhere, instructing visitors to keep their arms down. Ride operators were on high alert as well, warning people of this new policy. And they weren't afraid to enforce it either. Any park guest who was caught raising their arms would be kicked off the ride, and those who insisted on doing so anyway would find themselves getting kicked out of the park. Naturally, the public reacted to this rule with immense amusement, followed immediately by, You're serious? Now I wasn't able to find any more information about this policy, but considering that I've seen people on YouTube raising their hands on rides at the park, it's unlikely that the policy is still in place. Number 14, the dismembered dummy stunt. That's two Thorpe Park entries in a row here. This time, it involves a failed marketing stunt. In particular, this was meant to promote the park's Bolligar and Mabillard wing coaster, The Swarm. Thorpe Park was on a roll when it came to edgy and unorthodox marketing campaigns at the time, and the one for The Swarm was no different. Shortly before its opening in 2012, a rather bizarre incident seemed to occur during a test one. Run, not one, I'm not Elmer Fudd. According to officials, a set of dummies returned from their test ride with dismembered limbs. Talk about costing an arm and a leg. This was apparently due to a collision with a faux church along the ride's layout. It was as if God himself hated this coaster and everything about it. But this wasn't exactly the case. As it turned out, this was all a big fat promotional stunt designed to make the ride seem even more scary and exciting. The whole dummy debacle was staged, and it was meant to give an extra fear factor to the ride's near-miss moments with the scenery. 
It was certainly creative, but to Thorpe Park's disappointment, the stunt supposedly backfired. As it turned out, the swarm would end up being a commercial disappointment for Thorpe Park. Though whether or not the dummy stunt contributed to it is pretty much unknown. It would be 12 years before another major coaster was installed. Fortunately, in 2024, park fans can look forward to Hyperia, a record-breaking ride that represents a return to glory for Thorpe Park. Number 13, Electric Shock Kids Coaster. Here's another wild one for you. A few years ago, Chinese manufacturer Henan Dinis was aiming to promote their new Shark Coaster model. Now, the Shark Coaster is a type of children's powered coaster. For those unfamiliar, powered coasters use electrical current from the rails to propel the ride vehicle through the course. In this case, they wanted to make a video promoting the ride model to potential buyers. But this promo turned out to be absolutely embarrassing. The video they ended up releasing shows the coaster sparking like crazy while in operation. You can actually see a shower of sparks coming off the wheels with electric flashes. The whole thing looks like it's about to go up in flames. Sure, nobody was on board, but it's a whole nother level of incompetence to publicly showcase what looks like a malfunctioning ride as if everything is normal. It's hard to imagine anyone at Hanandini saying, yeah, we want the world to see this video. Let's put it on our website. Here's the real kicker though. Hanandini's has apparently gotten flack from buyers for its poor quality shipments. So much so that a Hungarian amusement park owner registered the company's name as a website just to showcase the condition of a flying car ride he ordered. This webpage shows the extent of the ride's condition, including cracks, loose parts, corrosion, exposed wiring, and worst of all, no electrical grounding. Without grounding, anyone who operates or rides this is dangerously susceptible to electric shock. I'll put a link to the website in the description, along with some videos of the ride's damage. Number 12, a meat processing plant coaster. We've covered strange sponsorships before on this channel, but this one takes the cake, or rather, takes the steak. I apologize. Anyway, this coaster is currently operating at a Russian amusement park named Wonder Island. This ride is named Belokoluski Miasakomina, which translates to English as no joke, Belokoluski Meat Processing Plant. This coaster is in fact named and themed to the Belokoluski brand of meat products. This company mainly manufactures sausages, though they also offer salted pork fat, dumplings, and more. As for the roller coaster, its station features a mural of smiling sausages wearing sunglasses, alliterations for the win, and it even features a sausage stuffing machine. The ride even starts off with a short dark ride section through a meat processing plant before the magnetic launch. After the launch though, there's not much meat to this coaster's theming, pun intended. Aside from the odd theme and name, the layout itself is not original at all. In fact, it's an exact copy of the famous Blue Fire roller coaster at Germany's Europa Park. This coaster has been cloned several times over the years, but the meat processing one certainly has the most unusual theme. What's really crazy though is that this isn't the only meat processing coaster at Wonder Island. Just two years after the original debuted, the park opened Bela Kaluski Meat Processing Plant 2. Yes, they went the roller coaster tycoon route and simply put the number 2 at the end. While the coaster itself is different from the first, it too is a cloned ride known as an Intamin 10 Inversion Coaster. If you live in the UK, you can ride an exact copy at Flamingoland under the name Sick. Or is it Seek? Well, that's enough talk of Russian meat coasters for now. But don't worry, because we're not even halfway done with this list. Just a quick warning though, this next segment may be too risque for some. Number 11, Coaster Condoms. Yes, Coaster Condoms. This marketing strategy came from a partnership between Alton Towers and condom brand Durex. The earliest example came with the opening of the world's first B&M dive coaster Oblivion in 1998. This coaster's condoms were both lubricated and orange flavored, with the ride slogan, Don't Look Down, on the box. But that wasn't all for the UK's venture into the coaster condom market. Over at Thorpe Park, the Intamin Accelerator Stealth had its own specialty box of condoms. This box proudly advertised the ride as hard, fast, and up in seconds. Now as awkward as it is for me to talk about condoms on what's usually a family-friendly channel, discussing safe sex should be nothing to be ashamed about. No joke, it literally saves lives and everyone involved with this campaign deserves praise. Admittedly, general audiences here in the United States, and YouTube's content policies in general, can be pretty anal about this subject. 
but perhaps we could all learn a lesson here. With that said, I still need to pay the rent, so I'm gonna move on before YouTube demonetizes this video. Number 10, Polar Express's Gravity Group collaboration. Remember the Polar Express movie? Who hasn't? It's a Christmas classic filled with yuletide charm and a whimsical journey into the uncanny valley. One of the film's most memorable scenes is when a cotter pin comes loose, sending the titular train into a high-speed runaway route to the North Pole. This scene was designed to make audiences feel like they're on a roller coaster, and this effect wasn't just achieved with filmmaking alone. Turns out that director Robert Zemeckis and producer Stephen Boyd actually contacted officials at American design firm Gravity Group. This company is known for acclaimed wooden coasters like The Voyage and Wooden Warrior. This company specializes in designing wooden roller coasters, particularly ones with jubilant airtime moments. And for this film, they aim to give the literal polar coaster just that. According to an article on Coaster101.com, the guys from the Gravity Group were able to apply their wooden coaster expertise to make sure that the final product was realistic and provided audiences with plenty of airtime. It's worth noting that this movie has actually been released in IMAX 3D. Without a doubt, the idea of riding a Gravity Group roller coaster in a movie theater sounds like a cinema experience truly worth the money. Though I still wouldn't pay $5 for a Dasani. I could get an Evian at the grocery store for less. Now just imagine how awesome a real Polar Express would be. Now that would be a perfect fit for any Santa's Village Park. Number 9. Montu's Crocodile Pit First opening in 1996, Montu at Florida's Busch Gardens Tampa is often hailed as the best inverted roller coaster of all time. With its sprawling layout, exhilarating inversions, and well-timed underground dives, this coaster is well worth its acclaim. Aside from the layout itself, the theming is what truly makes this coaster a one-of-a-kind experience. Nestled in the park's Egypt section, Montu is, appropriately enough, surrounded by various Egyptian-themed scenic elements. Upon its opening, one of these elements was a real-life animal encounter. Yep, this coaster opened with a Nile crocodile exhibit right under the first turn out of the station. Just think about how crazy an actual crocodile pit under a roller coaster sounds. I can imagine a lot of people freaking out over having their feet dangling above these animals. It certainly was a unique feature, and it really added to the ride's theming, but it was kind of problematic. This feature was reportedly removed due to concerns that shoes and other loose objects from riders could fall into the crocodiles below. While it was somewhat of a bummer to see this feature removed, it was ultimately for the better. If you were a crocodile, would you want to be subjected to falling flip-flops, sneakers, chewed gum, and pocket change raining down you all day? In the words of the late Great Gorilla Monsoon, highly unlikely. Crocodile Pit or no Crocodile Pit though, this coaster is still 100% worth riding. Number 8. The Flying Dinosaur's 12.5 Hour Listed Weight In 2016, Universal Studios Japan opened perhaps the greatest flying coaster of all time. At $92 million, this massive coaster clearly shows its price tag and is an instant eye-catcher for visitors. Just one look at this beast is enough to make you bolt for the entrance, and that's exactly what happened on its opening day on March 18th, 2016. Naturally, the line was insanely long that day, but just how long the park said it was came as a shock to guests. The maximum wait time displayed was 12 and a half hours. What the hell? You could drive from Washington DC to Orlando in less time than that. But though this listed wait time was confirmed by bloggers, the actual story behind it is a bit more nuanced. That day, the park opened at 8am and people immediately rushed to the coaster. Just 20 minutes after opening, the entrance to the line had already closed due to the overwhelming number of guests. Meanwhile, the ride's crew was still getting used to operating it, so loading, unloading, and dispatching naturally took more time. And as if that weren't enough, there was rain forecasted for the afternoon. With all this in mind, the park had to keep the queue shorter than its full capacity, so they reportedly inflated the wait time in an attempt to take all of these factors into account. Many guests who attended the grand opening said they didn't actually wait for 12 and a half hours, but that didn't mean nothing crazy happened that day. Apparently, some people actually got injured. Not on the ride, mind you, but in the queue. With so many people rushing to get on at once, this resulted in some injuries. A few people were even stepped on. Thankfully, it wasn't anything too serious, but it was still a scary situation. As for the ride itself, it remains an acclaimed attraction, with many saying it's the best ride at the park. But would you wait 12 and a half hours for it? 
Number 7, Shockwave was ridden backwards. Now let's shift gears a bit to talk about a notable aspect of the roller coaster world, coaster clubs. These groups of coaster enthusiasts arrange special group visits to parks around the globe, often directly with the parks themselves. As a coaster club member, you can get some awesome perks with these visits. These include free food and drink, but you could also get something known as exclusive ride time, or ERT for short. This means you get to enjoy the coasters either before the park opens or after it closes to the public with minimal lines, usually. One particularly unusual ERT session was offered by England's Drayton Manor in 2002. Here, club members were allowed to experience the park's stand-up coaster shockwave in a way that was definitely unorthodox. During an ERT session, enthusiasts were given the chance to stand up backwards on the coaster. Instead of facing forwards as usual, they actually stood with the seats blocking their field of view. Many enthusiasts who partook in this reported that, while it was uncomfortable, it was also incredibly fun and memorable. Though the park later discontinued this experience, those who have gotten to ride it this way certainly have bragging rights. Number 6. A Porsche Ran on Python Now this next segment takes advertising to a whole new level. Back in the 1980s, German auto manufacturer Porsche had developed an extremely unique marketing campaign. This campaign would consist of a commercial filmed at world-famous Dutch theme park Efteling with none other than Python, the park's Vacoma looping coaster. For this ambitious project, a special ride car was engineered for the coaster, designed to be attached to the front of the standard roller coaster train. This car consisted of metal bars and a functioning wheel assembly. Seems odd enough at first, but after rigorous testing, an actual Porsche 944 car body was attached to this ride car. You heard that right, an actual Porsche on a roller coaster. Of course, this project was extremely involved and required expert engineering. Extensive testing was conducted to ensure everything was in top shape, especially since actors would be riding the coaster car in the final shoot. After countless test runs and calibrations, the vehicle worked like a charm. The Porsche ran smoothly on Python, and the commercial that resulted was nothing short of spectacular. Nowadays, a studio would likely use CGI to make something like this, but the practical effects on display really make this ad special. Now this is an ad worthy of the Super Bowl. Number 5. The UK's Naked Coaster Record Next up, we're diving into a record-breaking, albeit unusual piece of roller coaster history from the UK. Did you know that the UK has broken the record for the most naked people on a roller coaster not once, not twice, not three times, but four times? The first record-setting ride was on Nemesis Inferno at Thorpe Park in May 2004. Not content with just one record, the country shattered it again on Nemesis at Alton Towers in August 2004. This streak continued at Southend on Sea's Adventure Island on Green Scream in 2010. Finally, the most recent record was set on the Grand National at Blackpool Pleasure Beach in 2019. The one at Blackpool was organized by British Naturism, the UK's natural naturist organization, and members of the public were free to sign up as well. For those who've ridden Grand National, you'll know it's not the smoothest of coasters. Add to that the fact that it was a chilly 50 degrees Fahrenheit that night, and you've got a rather interesting challenge. Nevertheless, many participants in the Grand National record recall the experience as memorable and upbeat. Even better, many of these record attempts were done to raise money for charity. But you know what? More power to these people. Number 4. Ralph Furman's F1 Ride on the Big One at Blackpool Pleasure Beach Turns out Efteling wasn't the only park to have a car strapped to one of their coasters. Shortly after the British Grand Prix in 2003, F1 driver Ralph Furman went to Blackpool Pleasure Beach for a special publicity event. This event was the grand opening of the park's Jordan Grand Prix ride. This is a tame antique car style family ride. To further promote the ride, Furman took a special ride on the park's star attraction, the Pepsi Max Big One. Similar to what Porsche did at Efteling, a Jordan EJ11 chassis Sans engine was mounted onto the roller coaster, replacing one of its standard passenger carriages. You may think that this vehicle would be unable to complete the course, but on the contrary, Furman navigated the entire layout in this car. Furman said of his experience, quote, Obviously, nothing comes close to driving a Formula One car around a racetrack, but I have to say, the minute I spent on the roller coaster was pretty exhilarating. This was truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and it gave Furman a credit not even Richard Bannister himself has. 
Number 3, a literal pissing contest by Saw the Ride. We've seen an unusual Thorpe Park marketing strategy before on this list, but this next one is just flat out bizarre. In 2009, Thorpe Park opened Saw the Ride, a Gerslauer Eurofighter model themed after the infamous Saw movie franchise. The next year, they decided to take things a step further with the launch of a Saw horror maze to go along with it. In February 2010, guests were given a chance to contribute to the attraction. And the way the park went about doing this was truly taking the piss. Believe it or not, Thorpe Park held a urine odor contest. In this competition, the guest with the worst smelling urine would win 500 British pounds. The winner would also have their scent used in the new haunt maze. During the contest, urinal booths and porta potties were set up around the park for this, including in front of Saw the Ride itself. Here, guests could have a slash <laughs> and contribute their samples in the open. But wait, there's more. The park didn't just ask for urine samples, they gave tips on how to make your urine smell worse. Suggestions included drinking alcohol or coffee, eating salty or sugary foods, consuming garlic, eating asparagus, and most questionably, deliberately dehydrating yourself. As a side note, remember that dehydration, especially at an amusement park, is a terrible idea. In fact, the reason most people get sick at amusement parks is from not drinking enough water. While you're at it, if you're thirsty, pause this video and go get some water right now. It'll still be here when you get back. All that aside, the contest was still commendable for its uniqueness, showcasing the out-of-the-box thinking of the marketing team. Number 2, a roller coaster with 5 tracks. Now it's time to boogie on down to 1970. That year, the World's Fair Expo 70 took place in Japan's Osaka Prefecture. Like other World's Fairs, this expo had a massive amusement park on the grounds. Here, a company named Sansei Yusoki built several rides. These included a gigantic roller coaster named Didarasaurus. This ambitious coaster had not one, not two, not three, not four, but five separate tracks. Each track's lift hill stood in a mesmerizing row, and the sight of all five trains on the tracks together was truly one to remember. Interestingly enough, the tracks had a bit of variety to them. One track was a mild family coaster, while two tracks directly raced each other and the remaining two dueled each other. Imagine being able to claim all five of these coaster credits, assuming you'd count them as five. At the time, this coaster was truly fit for a world's fair. After the fair ended though, officials wanted to reuse the land as a permanent amusement park. So to make room for new attractions, they removed the family coaster and the racing tracks, leaving only the dueling tracks still standing. Later on in 1999, the dueling tracks were combined into a quasi-Mobius loop coaster, meaning passengers would experience each track in one circuit. For the next few years, the coaster operated as arguably one of the longest on Earth. However, after a fatal accident on the park's Fujin Raijin 2 coaster, the park's attendance plummeted, leading to its closure in 2007. Nowadays, the former spot of the coaster is taken up by a shopping mall. Number 1. A roller coaster was built to jump the track. Brooklyn's Coney Island is a place that's often associated with the world-famous Cyclone Coaster. But in the early 1900s, there was another ride that aimed to redefine how thrilling a roller coaster could be. Designed by George Francis Meyer, this coaster featured a track segment that went through the barrel of a giant canyon. But that wasn't all. The original plan for this coaster was to have the cars race out of the canyon and hop a gap in the track, supposedly landing safely on the other side. This sounds like something out of a cartoon or a stunt show, but it was in fact built and tested with the intent to open it to the public. During the testing phase, sandbags took the place of human passengers. The results were a bit of a mixed bag, as while the car did make it across a few times, it crashed more often than not. What did they expect would happen? Realizing the risks and impracticality of the concept, the coaster eventually reopened with a gap filled by a connecting piece of track and operated until 1907. The dream of jumping the track on a coaster was put to rest, but this year, riders will finally get a similar sensation on the upcoming Donkey Kong coaster at Universal Studios Japan. It took over a century, but your wildest coaster dreams can at least partially come true. Now it's time for the comment shoutout program. This is where I take 5 random comments from my previous video and read them out. These comments are from my video on upcoming 2024 coasters. 
Hi, my name is 1235 says, a coaster theme to the Flash that's not even the fastest in the park gets me every time. ZR Lap says, a Condiment King ride would make a good dueling coaster with people having to choose mustard or ketchup, and have it themed to a fight with Batman, the ride? 10011000x02 says, can't wait for Iron Menace, Dorney is my home park. Airtime UK says, I am very excited for Hyperia, and think it definitely deserves the number one spot. I am going to Thorpe Park for two days in June, so that makes me even more pumped for it. And DTHG7TE says, Honestly cannot believe a UK ride is on the top spot. Even though I've now actually seen Hyperia, it still doesn't feel real. Last year's visit to Thorpe Park was incredible. The park really felt like it was going places again. The park was tidy, old bits were being cleaned up, rides were working reliably, and now they're adding this beast. It feels like early 2000s Thorpe Park again. If you want to see your words in my next video, leave a comment down below and it may be selected. Please note though that inflammatory or spam comments will not be read. Also, here's a shout out to my newest Patreon supporter, Cam. By the way, stay tuned for a rebooted Patreon with a bi-weekly podcast exclusive for $4 subscribers. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Instagram and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. And I'm on TikTok. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.